so this they, they are one to ten and then this one is the day 10th day 11 is in the bank so when we're harvesting our eggs this is what we do just come to your opening uh, untie your knot push it in just making sure that every fly that was around here goes back and then don't release it don't make it open this much just uh, slide your hand in there slowly and then harvest get your eggies slowly and then there you go you never miss two or three that will come out it's fine at times they need to feel good it's like prison break the one to experience the freedom but that's fine so that's what we do and then push it in again once you do it that way hold it at the end and then that's it a simple way the amount of waste that we are getting from the dump sites and all these that we are we're having there's a lot of carbon emission in that there is a lot of methane which is a silent killer but when you start working with BSF you tackle all those issues <laughs> Guys, these are the eggs from the BSF. That's the Black Soldier Fly larvae from the wild. Remember, we are uh, getting it from the wild, getting it, and then it gives us these eggs. From that, then we have the wheat bran and the maize bran, which again is a byproduct from the milling, from the millers. And that byproduct again, with our eggs from the BSF from the wild, we combine these, they feed. And then magic happens from there. Guys, this is lava from a wild insect. And this is the waste, kitchen waste. What you don't need at home after preparing your meal, the waste, and also what you, you, you leave behind after eating, the leftovers that you throw away. You bring them here, shred them, and then use this wild insect's egg hatched into a lava to convert this into this. A very rich source of protein in animal feed with a crude protein of over 36%, depending on what you give it. Guys, when you feed this on your pigs or your chicken, you cut your cost of feed by 50 percent that is the reason aim agriculture is here for you if you're new to our youtube channel guys kindly hit the subscribe button like and share we bring you the best like always aim agriculture will always bring you the surprises we are at protein masters nairobi and they bring you kim he's mastered this thing like yesterday here we go Hello, my name is Kim and uh, welcome to Protein Master. This day I want to just talk about BSF and uh, just want to enlighten you guys more about BSF and what is BSF and uh, what is this insect they call the BSF? It is the black soldier fly larvae and what's the purpose of it? BSF is used as a protein source. It's very rich in protein. We're talking about from 38% to 42%. And apart from the protein source itself, it also has over 
17 different amino acids. We have lysine, we have theonine. They even help boost the immune system of the animals you're feeding. For example, if you're doing a chicken and uh, they're doing, uh, consuming a lot of BSF, uh, they'll be high in protein number one and then the immune will be boosted. So you'll not have to do a lot of antibiotics in them and it's going to be well. Above everything else, it's organic, guys. We need to go back organic. Apart from that, the most effective thing we're doing here is lowering the cost of production. A lot of farmers are leaving their business, leaving the poultry industry and everything else just because the cost of production is too high. But as Protein Master here, we're coming to train you guys and show you guys how can we lower our cost of production. Because it needs to make sense for you, uh, once you lower your cost of production, to be able to make sense for you in the market. You need to make sure you're doing very low, so that at the end of the day, once you get to the market, you can be able to get an extra coin. And from that, it's from BSF. This is the best, and I always say, BSF is a game changer. So guys, let's take this walk and learn more about this fly called the BSF. BSF, uh, number one, you can get from the wild, but mostly in Africa, we, we don't really get it from the wild as much. Mostly in Asia and other parts, and uh, you can be able to get in the wild. In Africa, it's not that much in the wild. That's why as Protein Master, we are bringing you the seed. For our, our core business, again, is selling the, pre, uh, the parent stock. So you come to us, we're able to give you the seed, the right seed, that you'll be able to propagate it and be, uh, be able to start your own colony. So this is how we set our own colony here. Here, we have what we call the love cage. In the love cage, that's where we trap our flies. Because remember, we need to trap them for them to be able to give us the eggs and then we do the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the next uh, reproduction cycle. So in here, we have a few things. We have the, the pupa. So once the fly turns into pupa, remember the cycle uh, from egg, larvae, pupa, all the way again to fly. So we capture the pupa, have them in, in the love cage here, and we also need to allow good lighting in here. If you have poor lighting in here, you, uh, your people will not be paid right. So you need to have good lighting in here. But for more of all these, I know you guys will be coming and then we'll be able to learn more from us. So you get your pupa in here and then we also get, on the other side, we have something we call the smelly substrate. This is what it attracts the flies uh, from where it needs to lay their eggs. So once you have your pupa here, after three, four, five days, your, your flies will be out. After the flies are out, they'll be able to mate. To mate. These flies, they mate back to back. This is how they mate, back to back. Once they mate, the female and, and the male, they mate and then they can be able to give you eggs. They can give you between 500 to 900 eggs, one single fly. So once they mate, they need to go lay their eggs. And they need to lay their eggs in a place we call, uh, uh, we have a place, uh, something we call here the smelly substrate or the bait. So in the bait or the smelly substrate, we place what we call our eggies. So maybe if you can get a closer look here, we have some eggs on here. Uh, so in the eggies here, it's where the flies come and lay and squeeze their eggs in the pieces of wood here. So there are different types of eggies. You can be able to do uh, the wooden planks, you can be able to do the conduits, or you can do the cardboards. But for us, we prefer uh, the wooden planks. They do very well and they work very well. So after that, they lay their eggs. We need to remove our eggs after every three days or every maybe a day or two. But don't go beyond three days because after three days, your eggs will begin to hatch. And remember, once they hatch, they'll be laying down on the substrate. And the substrate is smelly and the ammonia is too high. So once they lay in there, you kill the eggs. So after a day or a maximum of three days, get them out and then let's hatch them. So from that again, we will be able to hatch them. And then the other thing, the lifespan of these flies is between seven days uh, to two weeks maximum. There is a secret we have as a company in here that we prolong the lifespan of this fly. That also, you, become, you come and you're able to learn more from us. And once uh, they have done their lifespan, that's been 7 and 14 days, with our in ingredient, it can move up to 21 days. So once they get that, once they die, you'll be having some dead flies under there. These, you're supposed to be able to remove them every like uh, uh, a week or two, get them out, to avoid it smelling so bad in there. Also, there is no waste. At Protein Master, we always say, turning waste to wealth. That's our slogan. 
We believe any waste that comes in, in here needs to come out as well. So anything that's even dead here, it's food for our chicken also. So you clean them up, give to your chicken, and they do very well. Apart from that also, uh, once you, when you're getting your eggies, or you're, hatch, you're harvesting your eggs, these you need to do it very early in the morning, very early in the morning when the, when the temperatures are very low, or do it late in the evening also when the temperatures are very low. If you do it uh, in the middle of the day, you're going to lose a lot of flies coming out. So early in the morning, 6.30, 7, please just wake up, come get your eggs, harvest them, and then we move to the next process, which is hatching. Hatching is very important. Like you uh, chicken farmers, poultry farmers, you understand if you go wrong on your hatching of your eggs, everything goes wrong. If you go wrong on uh, the temperatures of an incubator, everything goes wrong. The same, the same concept, that's the same thing we're doing in BSF. You need to have it right. If you have it uh, not in the right way, guys, you've killed it up. But now let me show you. That's why we're here to train you guys and just tell you guys more about these. And now what we do here on the hatching, we use these. It's wheat bran plus maize bran. And other magic stuff we put in there. Once you step in here, guys, you'll learn more. We'll let you know. But wheat bran, maize bran, that's what we're going to use. Why we're using these wheat bran and maize bran is because we want our larvae to be able to feed well when they're in their uh, young stages. Very, very little young uh, uh, neonates. They need to fall on this food here and come out very well. So we use wheat bran and maize bran. We just soak it in water for a few days and allow it to ferment a little bit. There's one thing I always tell farmers, even when you're doing your, your poultry, they always say when you're feeding your chicken, you don't, you don't just throw in dry maize on them. Because look at this, when you throw in uh, out dry maize on, the, on their chicken, they'll just feed on those dry maize. You slaughter that chicken two days, three days after, you still find, the, the, you still find the, the whole grain of that maize intact there. That's the wrong way to do it. They always say that you need to soak your maize for a few days when they are about to sprout. Then you have opened up the nutrients of that. So you feed them to the chicken again, they eat very well. The same concept we use here. We soak our grain so to open it up so that we may have every nutrient coming up. So the larvae will be able to feed from these. So once you've done that, uh, soak it in there. Get your eggies, which you have said. Remember, the eggies, which you have said uh, from our love cage. You take what we have, what we call the coffee tray. Uh, maybe I can just show you one of, the, of them. This is a coffee tray, five millimeter. So once you get the coffee tray, place your eggies on top of the coffee tray. And then now bring them where you have your substrate. So we have our substrate here, down here, and then our coffee tray on top there, and then you place your eggies here. Look at these guys. You don't scrap your eggs from your eggies. The moment you begin to scrap your eggs off, you'll be killing some of them. You'll be killing some of them. So don't scrap your eggs. The same way they got in here, the eggies, is the same way they'll know how to come out. Uh, don't help them to come out, please. Just allow them, the way they came in, whoop, they'll be able to come. So what happens? We leave them here for like uh, three days, six days max. And once you do that, remember, our substrate here is fermented. So you need to cover it. Because if you don't cover it again, what will happen? The flies, the housefly will want to come access here because of that smell. And then you'll be having some housefly maggots in here. You don't want that. This is what happens here. This is the magic. Once you place your eggies on top here, uh, I think you, you see in between the eggies, you can see some yellow stuff. Those are the eggs. So you don't scrap off. Remember I just said that. You don't scrap off your eggs. You kill part of them. To avoid that, just place them on a coffee tray. Place them on top. That way, easy. Easy. And then, remember, we have our substrate down here. So once you place them on top here, what happens? Once they begin to hatch, the larvae, the neonate, will just fall from the eggy down to the substrate and automatically begins feeding. This is like when a baby is born. Automatically they are born and they get the breast of the mother and they begin to suck. The same thing with the neonates. They fall on the feed and automatically they begin to feed on that. So that's why we need to have 
easy food down here. I call it something like Sherlock or Weedabix for a better comparison. Uh, if you have, if you give them something hard, they'll not be able to grow better. You need, they need to have very light food for them to be able to eat very fast. So we get a net also. And in the net here, what we do, we just cover our container that way. Easy. So at least there's ventilation because it's a net because some good, a lot of holes in here. So your flies will not be able to have access. So we leave it in here for six days, maximum three, six days. I say the, the eggs begin to hatch on the third day. So whatever that, that's in here will hatch. And the one that was laid on the day you're harvesting, you still need to give it another three days. So you leave it, leave it in here, three days, and it will be well. The other thing before I forget, on your substrate, how wet or how dry your substrate need to be depends again on your area. If your area is too hot, you need to add some water on your substrate and make it more wet. If your substrate, uh, if your area is cold, let your substrate be just be moderate to avoid it to be so watery. Because once they fall in there and it's too watery, they will self-harvest. So then that, that, that uh, issue of how wet it is, the moisture content, that depends again with your area. Uh, if it's too hot again, make it, uh, make, make it more wet. If it's too cold, uh, just have it moderate. After six days, after six days, we'll be here now. We'll be here, we'll be here, we'll be here after six days. Let me just show you guys. I think maybe we can zoom in uh, a bit closer and now see after six days. So after six days, our sub remember our substrate was wet, but right now it's dry and it's been eaten up. So after six days, we're having now our neonates. We call them neonates. They're five-day-old or we call them five-doll. That's five-day-old larvae. Or otherwise, we call them neonates. So after six days, we'll be having our neonates. They've eaten up everything. Remember, our, our substrate was, look, was more brownish in color, uh, more golden in color. But right now, you look at it, it's dark because most of what we're having here right now, they're the crust on top of uh, every grain we had. So we have it well. You look at these ones, they are in millions. Very tiny, but in millions. So it is from here now, we want to do the next process and the next stage, which is the main feeding. Remember, all we, want, all, all, all we are doing about with BSF is cutting down all the cost of production. So if I tell you guys to keep on feeding your larvae on uh, wheat bran and maize bran, it will not make sense. You'd rather feed your chicken and everything else directly with the maize bran and the wheat bran. But here now we want to show you now how we are cutting cost on production. The only, the, the only shilling extraction you said you have used maybe is just on the maize bran and the wheat bran. Nothing more. After here now, we're going to introduce to you what this larvae feeds on. And trust you me, it feeds on waste. You know, day six now, this is where the magic happens. I just love this. That's why I always say again, BSF is a game changer. Why I love it is because we are going to use now waste. Remember, farmer, uh, we are trying to solve so many solutions here by using one insect called the BSF. We are coming to help on production, uh, cutting, costs on the cost, cut, cut, cutting costs on the production, and also the waste you are suffering from. Maybe you have a thousand chicken in your farm, you have a thousand pigs. That waste is a mess on your farm. But BSF is coming also again to help you in that. So from day six, now we introduce the main waste. This is the main waste here. I know you'll be wondering, you're not seeing the market we see in here, you're not seeing the oranges, the kills and everything else. But these will show you the process. We've grinded this food. And uh, why we're grinding it is because we want to make it easy for the larvae to feed on. Because if we leave it whole, you can try to imagine having this big chunk of ugali and this big chunk of something else. And this tiny larvae trying to fight this big ugali, trying to bring it down. So it uses most, most of its energy to break it down instead of most of its energy to eat. So for us, we, it's like we've just chewed it for, for them and then they're just enjoying swallowing in. Because remember, we want to look and harvest. We're looking for a big larvae. This is what we always say here at Project Master. The big larvae you have, the big fly you'll have, and the better egg production you're going to have. You don't want to have a weekly fly. 
you want to have a strong flyer that will be able to give you good production of eggs. So, this is the main weight now. And now this is where we are saving our cost. So what we do, we take our six day old larvae, and now we have our waste here, we take 10 kgs of the waste, and then we do 150 grams of the neonates. So I've got my weighing scale here. This is just a, a simple weighing scale. Some of you farmers may not have, be able to have it. So for me, I always tell farmers, let me just tear these. I tell farmers, don't be troubled if you don't have a weighing scale. Uh, you get, you're gonna use your hands. And uh, some guys are good in doing that. I always say three handfuls. That's one. What we are looking for, we are looking for 150 grams. That's two. And that's three. There I got more than that. I got an excess of 20. Perfect. So there we are having 150 grams. Very little. Look at the difference. I want just to show you how you can be able to make a lot of larvae. Here we have another like 20 crates of these from only these ones. So your chicken will never starve. They'll enjoy them all. They are going to feed on meat and protein. That's the best. Look at these farmers. This is what I look at it. Years ago, we never had the starter, the finisher and all these. Our grannies used to get the maize and maybe get a few, throw them on the chicken and we will we'll let the chicken go hustle for themselves. So they go scrap, uh, scratch on top everywhere, get the worms, and they're good. And they used to be very good, very healthy, the eggs will be very good. So the same way, we are going back again to the roots and do what we used to do some years ago. So you are 10 kilos of waste and you're 150 grams of the neonates, the six day old larvae. So you just spread them evenly on top there and we let them enjoy here. We are serving a buffet of waste on them because, guys, there are fruits here, there is meat, there is wool, there is vegetables. These guys are enjoying it. It's early Christmas for them. They're loving it. So we just leave them that way. Don't touch anything. They'll all go under. They love to burrow. That's the nature of their larvae. They love to burrow. So they'll just hide under, go enjoy, step in everywhere. You know, get everything. So... This we leave it for another 10 days, a maximum of 10 days, but you can do between 8 and 10 days. So a maximum of 10 days, but these considering the temperatures, we're looking at between 26 degrees Celsius to 36 degrees Celsius. If you get something lower than that, again, you prolong the days. That's why it's always advisable to have it in a greenhouse or in a warm place. So if you do in a colder place, they'll prolong. But for us, we'll give you the, 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 the nitty gritties of how you achieve it very fast. Because no, no businessman, nobody wants to do it very, for, for, for a long time. You want to hit it very fast. So eight days, 10 days, you are good to go. And then these weight, these 10 kilos, will have reduced to something else. And then I show you now the next level, where again, remember, for you, you think we're just looking at the love here. But out of this one crate, we are going to get two different streams of income, which is the larvae and the compost, which is the frass. We call it the frass. It's very good organic manure, and it's converted within 8 to 10 days. The normal compost takes around 60 days. Who wants to take that long? Use BSF, and we get it, get it better. So let's move to the next level after 10 days, and then I'll show you how it's going to look like. After we've done... Uh, mixed our, our, our 150 grams of neonates or the six day old larvae in our 10 kg of waste always we need to label you need to label this crate it's very important you need to label so that you may know when you did it the date so what we do here uh, when is today today is the fifth so we do the fifth December uh, 2023 and then now here we say it's
it's a neophyd. So the neophyd, we go for 10 days. So this crate on the 15th, it will be out. So that you need to have this because you need to track what you're doing. You need to follow these all the way to the end. If you don't, if you don't label it, you get confused in between. You'll be having to look on every crate, on every crate again. And then you waste most of your time. It gets tedious. But you have it this way, you're tracking it. So guys, after 10 days, I want to show you guys now where the money is. This way you see it and you smile all the way to the bank. And you smile all the way. It's going to be better. So we want to do sieving now. We want to separate. Remember I told you? We, we, we had our neonates, our six-day-old levy, and our waste. And I told you those, those were two different channels of income. This is what the businessmen say. For you to have a good life, you need to have more than three sources of income. So I want to show you the one and the two, and maybe we'll get the three. All right? So in sieving, we get our crates, our empty crates. Uh, that's what we do. We make sure our crates are clean. Even the lavi, you need to love your lavi. They always say love your lavi. If you don't love your lavi, it won't love you back. So it's a good relationship you need to have with them. So once you love your lavi, they love you back. And then now we have our 10 days, our 10 days lavi. There they are. Look at them. Very beautiful. I love them. I just love these guys. I just love these guys. I love these guys. You know, these are my buddies. You know, I, I see farmers uh, cuddling their pets and everything, their dogs. Me, I cuddle these guys. I love them. This is a game changer. So after 10 days, this is what, we, what, what we're having. So what we're using in, in, in this stage, it's uh, a coffee tray, 5 millimeter. And we, we're also going to use a goose wire, 2 millimeter. So we start with a coffee tray, 5 millimeter. It's an easy way of sieving. So there are different ways of sieving also. You can have maybe an uh, electric siever, the vibrator, that thing. Mostly they use it uh, in tea factories, I've seen that. So you can have that, but remember we are cutting costs. We, we want to make life easy. You don't have to go so robotic and all these machines, but it's good, but easy. I want to show you the easiest way to make your money so remember guys uh what we did the 150 uh, grams of the of the 60 old lavi or the neonates and the 10 kilograms of waste so guys this is how it was and uh it's heavy guys it's heavy so that's how it that's how it is and after 10 days now after 10 days now guys that's the beauty the conversion i just love it Remember, we also helping the environment on this. We are doing it very good. And uh, after 10 days, you can feel how, or you can see how I've just lifted it. No struggle, because they've done the conversion. They've eaten up everything. So you can imagine this was 10 days ago, and these. 10 days after. Look at that conversion. That's what I was telling you. Even if you're doing composting, you need 60 days. Me only need 10 days. Why do I need 10 days and new 60s? Because for me, I've got some guys who are working for me very fast. They're doing much, much better than ordinary composting. So it's from here now. I'm going to show you how we're going to separate because we need to do separation. And this is what I'm saying. We are separating the larvae from the frass because it has already converted this to very good compost we call it the frass this frass again is very good we are coming to help on the green economy remember guys we have over uh, done our our lands we have overused our lands we need to get back the nutrients back again the npk on this frass is very good we took it to the labs and it passes a very good organic manu manure. We've, been, we've done testing with them. We've done uh, uh, maize. We've done uh, different stuff, and they're doing very good. So I want to show you how you separate these. You get your compost on the side. You get your larvae on the side. So your chickens will enjoy your larvae, and your vegetables 
will enjoy the compost, your fruits will enjoy the compost, your farm itself will enjoy the compost. You'll be saving on the green economy. And then on the blue economy also, we are saving on the blue economy because the larvae is coming to bring a solution. Remember guys, there is overfishing of the fish meal. We call it omena. Uh, the humans want the omena and, and, and the chicken and the livestock want the omena also. But we want to separate these. We want to say the humans stick to omena and then the larvae to, to these other animals and everything else. Because again, if we continue overfishing these small fish again, the omenas, the fish meal, it will be a big problem. We'll kill, we'll kill every fish. Because the big fish depends on the small fish. The blue economy is another big issue. BSF is coming to help. That which they are, discuss, they are discussing in COP27, COP28. These small guys here are the solution. COP28, guys, these are the solution. Because once we do this, we are good to go. Remember, we are getting waste from, the, from, from, from the, our, our place where we're dumping our waste. And uh, there's a lot of carbon. Apart from carbon, there's a lot of methane. And BSF is coming to handle all that. It's not rocket science. Very easy, guys. So come again for training. We'll learn more. So let me just show you how we separate these. The waste, which was this one. But for me, here at Protein Master, we don't call it waste now. We call it the money. All right. So, guys, what we do, uh, we don't pour everything in one space. So, we just do bit by bit. That way. That way. Remember what I told you earlier. The larvae loves to burrow. So, what happens? They don't love it when they're in, uh, exposed in the light. So the only thing you can only do here, it's a gentle spread. Don't overdo it. Is this a gentle spread? A gentle spread because you just want the larvae to go down. So you just do a gentle spread on, on these. So what I'm doing, I'm exposing them to light. Remember, just like a, maybe a month old or a few days old baby, when you bring the baby out in the sun, he or she will just hide from the sun. The same thing happens with larvae. So it's an easy way of harvesting. You don't struggle. So everything will just go down. So what, what we're doing here first, we are letting them go under. So what will go under here, it's the larvae plus the frass. What will be left on top here, we are going to be left with the uh, other ways that are not organic, which are not degradable. So we have some plastic, something else. That's why we're encouraging everyone. We need to do sorting from the source. And um, we, we are trying some with some other guys and it's working. We need to go back there, guys. We need to sort our waste from the source. The plastics on the sides, the uh, cardboards and everything else, the boxes on the sides and uh, the papers on the side and the organics, which again we're coming to have here. So that's it is what will be left on top. And the other thing will be left on top also, it's the pupa. Remember the pupa is dormant. The pupa does not move. Remember the stages, we move from stage one and we call it insta one, insta two, insta three, up to insta four of the larvae, insta five of the larvae. From that insta, we move to the next insta, which is the pre-pupa, that is black in color. And uh, before I get to the, uh, to the pre pupa let me just come uh, back again to the larvae itself. One thing about this larvae, one thing about this larvae, the larvae consumes, it eats twice its body mass. Assuming you are 100 kilos or 80 kilos, it's you're saying every single day you are eating 160 kilos of food every single day. This is how they are. These are ferocious eaters. The ferocious eaters, they can eat and eat and eat. That's why they are good for conversion of waste. So from that, we'll get Insta1, which are the neonates, the six day old, those are Insta1s. We come two, three, four, five, five again, five will be able to turn again to a black one in color. The black one in color is called the pre-pupa. After the pre-pupa again, the pre-pupa do not feed on anything. They've done it all, they've eaten and they're good. From the pre-pupa again a few days, they turn again to pupa. The, the pupa is dormant 
and you look at the, at the at the back, it's tilted somehow. It's tilted. So that's the pupa. So that is some some of the pupas will be, will be left on top. So that's the easy way of separating the larvae from the pupa. So what will be left on top here? We're having a bit of the waist and the pupa. So this pupa is what we take them back again to the love cage where we started. So this is how we get it. So I, I always say boys to men. So the men are left on top and the boys go under. So the men are the ones who go for production on that side. They are the only ones who are allowed to do the other stuff for propagation on the other side. <laughs> the boys go under. So we leave the boys until they grow so that you can introduce them to the other side. So we get the, uh, the people here and take them uh, to the to the love cage. So it's an easy process. It's an easy process. You don't have to, to do a lot of stuff. So it's an easy process. Get your pupa back to the to the love cage. And then now we move from here. We put this one aside. Once we put them aside, we will do another sieve using the two millimeter sieve, which is the goose wire. So in the two millimeter now is where we are going to separate the larvae from the compost itself. So after we've done our, our sieving with the five millimeter uh, sieve, which is a coffee tray, this is what we have. So what I do, I combine, I combine these so that I can be able to sieve. So that's it. Now let me do these. And then these ones, get on the side. And then now I use the goose wire which is a two millimeter size. So here, the larvae cannot uh, burrow, cannot go through. That's why we are reducing that. So here is the only part we're going to shake a little bit. Remember the first one, you, we weren't even doing anything. While we are shaking, we want to be left with the larvae on top, and then the frost goes under. So I use another crate on the side. So here, you just need to have a good song in you and you play that you are kayamba or something and you love it so you shake very fast very fast to avoid them going under and then pop you're having it there so this is what i'm saying instead of using a vibrator you just enjoy your day doing this easy easy peasy that way and you're good so here your farm will be enjoying and longing for the day you are doing the separation because they'll be loving it. They'll be loving it. They'll be loving it. Remember, this is the only 150 grams we had. Those larvae, you could not see them, but look at the size now. Look at the size. It's almost about to be full. So from the 150 grams and the 10 kg, mostly you can get between two kilos to 2.5 kilos at the end which is very good and uh, mostly like the chicken the chicken only does 110 grams a day so using bsf you're going to do something like 50 50 60 percent so you'll be doing 60 percent of bsf and uh, 50 percent of the uh, conversion of food or you can just do maize and a bit of greens so here we are look at that remember this the, the 150 grams we, we we had in in our in our 10 kg but look at it now you could barely see the the, the neonates the larvae but look at them this is the 150 grams of the neonates we have so when you look at these we have different colors we've got the brown I hope it's the brown or the beige. As men, we are colorblinds. Forgive me for that. So maybe the beige and the sizes are different. Also, we have the black ones. So they are turning. So from Insta 1, we move from Insta 1, which is the, the, uh, the six-day-old. We go to Insta 2, Insta 3, Insta 4, Insta 5. From Insta 5, it moves to the black one. I'm going to talk about it very, very, uh, in a few. We've got the black ones, and then I'll tell you about it. And then from that, the, uh, the pre pupa those are black ones that are moving. They're called the pre-pupas. And then we have the pupa, which are dormant, which was the side. But I'm, I'm going to show you more about that. So what we do on this one. So here, this is what I tell you farmers. Take 70% of the 
uh, feed your chicken, feed your pigs, feed your fish, and the fish love it. You do something like tilapia, uh, you need to dry it because uh, tilapia feed this way uh, from the top. But if you have catfish, the mud fish, you just feed them live. You don't have to dry it. Your chicken, you don't have to dry it. Your pigs, you don't have to dry it. They love it this way. They love it raw. So take 70%, take 70%, and then keep 30% on the side for propagation. Because you need, need to continue to grow your colony. So keep 30% on the side. 70%, take it to the bank, get more cash. It's 30%. Keep it for propagation and your life goes on well. You keep on doing this great conversion. Trust you me, guys. Be yourself. It's a game changer. So let me show you now. We did the 10 kg on the first time, but the second time we're going to do 6 kg. Why are we feeding them again? Is because the brown ones here still need to eat. The black ones, yes, they are, they are done feeding, but they need to turn to pupa. So we need to keep these other guys feeding, but now we have reduced uh, our, 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 our cages from 10 to 6. And then these ones, we need them to turn to pupa for the next uh, propagation cycle for the BSF. So let me show you how we're feeding. It's the same process. So it's, it's 10 kilos on the first, on the second, 6 kilos. So let me do the 6 kilos. Remember this is what we got from the first sieving. Remember we had the, uh, the 10 days that we fed the larvae, the neonates. From that one, we sieved our first sieving, which I'm telling you it's about 2 to 2.5 kilos. And uh, of the color still, I told you about it, the black and the brown. But we need to do the second feeding. So the second feeding, we're going to reduce the amount of waste we, we're doing. The first one, we did 10 kilos. The second, we're going to do 6 kilos. So it's easy. We just pour them on our substrate which is the waste also so this one again we just leave it there but apart from that there's something else i want to tell you about remember the black ones they don't feed so they always want to get out so they get they feel irritated they want to get out of this uh waste and this is the example i tell people like I remember when we, when we were young, we would do a whole loaf of bread by yourself and nobody will just stop you. You want your brothers and sisters not to be around so that you may be able to eat by yourself. But as you grow old, you want two slices or you don't want it, you feel like I don't want it. That's where the black ones are right now. The black ones don't, don't want to eat anything. So they want to exit. So to avoid that, what we do, uh, we use some sawdust. So we just have it round the tree these are some secrets we sh just show you the sodas the larvae don't feed on these so there's no problem we just a bit just a little bit just a little bit round why we're doing that is to avoid the black ones which are the pre pupas to self-harvest because we don't do these tomorrow morning they'll be all over the floor and you want to get them in so you just do that and then we leave them for another, now the first one we went to eight to eight, uh, eight to ten days. This one here will do maximum seven days, cause it's a bit uh, they're, they're old and they're going to eat very fast. So seven days maximum, they'll be out, and then now we'll be having a lot of the pupa, which we need to get them back again to the love cage. So after seven days, we're going to see again. So. Let me show you uh, what the seven day old uh, will look like after here and show you how we're going to save it and we get our pupa from that. These are our second feeding and remember these guys, what we fed here is the, 70, uh, the 30%. From the first saving, we got between 2 kilos to 2.5 and then we divided the 70 which was going to be fed to the chickens, the fish and everything else and then we were left with the 30%. So the 30% is the one that goes to the second feeding, which is this one here now. So in here, we only need seven days. And in seven days, we'll be having this one again. They've eaten up. You can tell with them in the color. Most of them here right now are black. And most of them here have turned into pupa. 
Guys, if you delay after seven days, what will happen? Pupa doesn't know for you. Pupa doesn't know that you have a meeting with the president or somebody else. It will just be paid on its day four or five and it will exit. So you need to be very fast. So we need to see this one. And once we see this one, now we take our, love, our pupa into the love cage. So let me show you how we sieve and how we separate our pupa. The same process repeats itself. Remember what we used last time? Uh, a coffee tray, five millimeter. Arrange your crates on top here and we're good to go. So we are separating the second sieve. The ones I've just talked about you. So what we do again, you don't push them hard. Remember I told you, most of them, they love to burrow. So what will happen here? They'll just go under. And in this second feeding and sieving, what we are looking for mostly, we are looking for the pupa now. Because I've just told you, if you delay harvesting your pupa, you are done. They'll just pupate and they'll be all over this room. And you don't want that because you can't capture them. You can't maybe try to get one after the other. It's tedious. So just like last time, a gentle push, a gentle push. So whatever is on top that has not formed will go under. So just a gentle push and we're done. So you look at, at this, most of what we're having here is pre pupas which are about to turn into pupa, which I'll tell you about in a few. So that's it. Easy peasy. I tell you, it's so easy when you're doing this. The larvae work for you. They just borrow. So what is left on top again, I told you, is a pupa. So on stage two, or second feeding, that's where we get lots and lots and lots of pupa. Remember the first uh, feeding, uh, sieving, there were very few pupas. You'd count them one or two, one or three. But here now, we're having lots of them. So this pupa is what we take, and then we take them to the fly room where magic happens. So again, the process continues. What we're having under it still again needs to have another sieving with a goose wire. Still again, the 70, it goes, back to, uh, goes to the chicken and the fish and everything else. And the 30 again for propagation. So it's a cycle. It's a process that repeats itself all the time. So in this stage, what we are looking and actually looking at is collecting the pupa. So once we get our pupa to the fly room and the propagation, the life cycle continues. So these are our... Our guys who are needed to go to the to the main room where magic happens. That's what we are told. When you go for all those things, you're told that's where the magic happens. And for the BSF, the same thing. Easy, we love it. When you see these people, and also the size of the people matters a lot. The bigger the pupa, the bigger the fly, the better the egg production. It's at Protein Master where we show you how to get your pupa. And your, your lovey to this stage. You've got lots and lots of secret guys. You better show up. You better show up. You better show up and learn all these. These happens here. So that's it. And uh, for the rest, for the rest, remember guys again the same process. We use the 5 mm sieve. Again, separate uh, the larvae from the frost. Take your frost to the farm and then your larvae. Again, you'll have the 70% back to the poultry or to the pigs or everything else you're using. And then 30% again for propagation. So continue the cycle the same. So this one will be done. We'll, we'll do the same thing we did before. Sieve and leave it. So, but these ones, we are taking them now to the love cage, which we have on the other side. Our place will be divided into two. We have the fly room and the lavarian room on the other side. So let me show you. Let me take you to the fly room. And I'll show you how we do it. We've been able to get our pupa, which will take you to the next level. But here first, I want just to show you what we're having here on our lavarium room. We have the section of uh, the hatchery. You look at it, it's different from the, from the rest. We've got it covered with the black polythene to maintain the right temperatures in here. And then now we come all the way where we put our, our fast feeding, our new feeding. Everything is labeled. 
So we come all the way, we come this way. And then here, we show you guys the products we are having from uh, BSF. We got the dried larvae, you can be able to dry it. And by the way, guys, let me just inform you this. BSF is not just for animals, it's also for humans. The UN statistics show that by 2050, we'll be, have, we'll be over 10 billion. And the biggest part of the population will be in Africa. And there'll be shortage of protein. So we need to double our protein. So BSF, BSF comes into play a very big role. We've got people who've been able to do it. And uh, you can grind this larvae into powder. And you can be able to mix it with uh, uh, children's porridge. And uh, it has been done before. And the children are really doing it very well. The issue of malnutrition, uh, standard growth, uh, it's coming to an end because the protein is coming to do very well. From that, we've gone the red larvae, we have the frass, we talked about the frass, this, the byproducts from it, we've got the dead flies, and then we also have the pupa shells. Pupa shells also are very good, they're rich in calcium. And uh, they've got keratin, the pharmaceuticals uh, companies can use these again also, and they're very rich. Also, you can crush them, once you crush them, feed them to your chicken. Very rich in calcium, doing very good. So after, from the, our lavarian room, now we get in to our fly room. This is where the magic happened, guys. Let me take you in. So, remember what we got last time? Uh, our, our pupa. Now we bring them in to the place of magic. These are the pupas that we got from the other side, from the lavarian room. So we bring it in the love cage. You've seen all our uh, love cages here. This is our fly room. So what we do here, just get your pupa in this container. These we call it the pupa containers. The other thing you don't make sure it's not full because you need good ventilation in here. They should not be overcrowded. So once you do that, we need to open here. This is how we do it. We open there. And then we get these ones in the pupa. In, in three, four, five days, flies will be coming out from these. So, and then we'll be left with the shells. The flies will be all over here. So, easy. We get it in there. That's it. And uh, the process continues. So we close it tight. And that's it. It's easy. So there we just leave it for uh, five, four days. But we're not going to remove these ones. We're just leaving the days, uh, the five days for the pupa to be able to pupate and, and get our flies. And then from our flies again, the cycle starts again. We get our eggs and then our get eggs, we get them out, take them uh, to the hatchery on the other side and the cycle continues. So let me just sh uh, share with you guys about uh, the larvae. Uh, on the fly, I told you the fly, the lifespan of the fly is between 7 and 14 days. And of that, it dies. But I've told you in the company here, Protein Pro Pro Master, we have the secret of prolonging the life up to 21 days. Apart from the fly, after it lays its eggs, now we come to the larvae. I want to show you uh, and talk about the larvae itself. What I can tell you about the larvae itself here, it eats twice its body mass, number one. So we need a lot of waste to convert these. So twice the body mass is, if you're 80 kilos, you're doing 160 every day. Uh, another thing, as you've seen, as you've heard, they're voracious eaters and they're brown in color. So here they move from insta one, we call them instas or stages. One, two, three, four, five. So the big one here, you're looking at it here, this is an Insta 5. So once it moves from Insta 5, it turns black in, in color, like this one. And uh, the friend here. So it turns uh, black in color, and they still have movement. So these ones, remember we said the other ones eat twice their body mass. But these ones are, do not feed now. They, it's like they've eaten up until they're full, they don't feed. So these ones are called pre-pupa. So after pre-pupa now, we leave the pre-pupa, and then now we get to the pupa, which I showed you before. It's uh, black in color, but does not have 
what do we say uh, the mobility is zero and the back and the back of, of, of the pupa let me take one here this one here so from pre-pupa we come to the pupa you look at it it's dormant it's not moving it's like dead but it's not dead in there we have the fly you look at it also at the back it's tilted so that's how you know a pupa so this pupa is the one that goes to the love cage and then from all of it there is a fly that will come out once the fly comes out it leaves a shell we don't even throw the shell away uh, the shell again you can crush it use it on the farm or you can also use it uh, to feed your chicken they are rich in calcium so that's the process insta one to five pre pupa and then pupa and then the fly just want to show you how we get our waste so basically this is a waste this is what you you guys have thrown away these are the, the things you've done be able to do from the restaurants so we collect them and when we have the slogan turning waste to wealth we believe in it because you can try imagine these are ways that people are finding it on the streets jumping over it but you're jumping over the money at project master we want to see the bigger picture so we want to get this waste and clean the community clean our country clean our cities and then once we get them this way we grind them we use a hammer mill to grind them so we have a hammer mill on this other side after we've gotten the waste from the market remember it comes in big chance we've got the, the fruits we've got the mangoes we've got uh, food from the eateries and all these so we bring them on this machine this we call it the hammer mill so we push all the waste in here comes in here it's grinded and then it goes down there when it's in paste form and then we move it to the other bucket on the other side when it's in paste form why we grind it is because we want to make it easy for the BSF to be able to consume it so it's easy I love it I love it when I see the waste you've thrown away helping somebody else because what is being thrown away is coming to help the community it's coming to help the world eventually it's coming to help every and everyone in the world what a beauty greetings Bona Kim yeah today I literally have no question <laughs> but for the sake of my viewers mm -hmm. I wish I had their numbers I could be calling them so that they bring their questions mm -hmm. but I'll ask something eh? okay you talked about the lighting sure when one wants to start this project mm -hmm. lighting mm. what is this lighting uh, amounts that are required here and what is the main reason why you require uh, this amount of light okay that's a good question number one are doing BSF yes. lighting is very important okay there are a few things not just about lighting let me maybe, maybe I can just uh, uh, pick a few Great. we always say lighting ventilation mm -hmm. is very important humidity very important so when talking about lighting we say your room should be well lit and lighting not artificial lighting there's natural lighting and artificial lighting why BSF is doing very well in Africa is because our temperatures are good are favoring us so lighting has to be natural uh, if you can look at the room here yeah. it's like we are outside yeah so lighting natural lighting very important just like uh, we, we see with the babies mm -hmm. uh, lighting is very important uh, the Sun vitamin D it helps so much so if your room is well lit you're good to go so lighting very important apart from lighting uh, humidity uh, humidity we always say about 40 to 80 percent if your place uh, is lower than this or more than this again it will not be good uh, why I say that is because when you saw when we're on the other side of the fly room there was a blanket down there sure. would we always pour water in there to make sure the humidity rises up Okay. so we want the humidity to be between 40 to 80 percent so when you have it that way we are good to go the other thing you need to have look at is temperature temperature again very very important BSF does it does very well between 26 degrees Celsius to 36 degrees Celsius in between here they perform very well they eat very well so if you have more than this again you burn them up uh, if you have it low they do it very slow for example if it's very hot if it's very very hot they'll not be able to do it very uh, as in a 
uh, eat the food very well or the flies will be irritated because uh, on the larvae side the larvae themselves generate heat, generate heat amongst themselves so you can imagine they generating heat amongst themselves and again there's another heat on top of them so they may end up dying or something wrong so that's why your room should be well ventilated good lighting temperature between 26 to 36 and then uh, a humidity 40 to 80 and you're good to go wow yes wow that's nice mm -hmm. now yes uh, mr kim yep a keen look at your structure mm -hmm. it more of looks like a greenhouse from the outside mm -hmm. but when you enter inside again mm -hmm. it looks different uh -huh. the outside has got the green the greenhouse uh, polythene polythene yep and from inside mm -hmm. you've it's a netting all around a netting a hundred percent exactly like there's no uh, there's no opening where the flies can fly out exactly yeah now mm -hmm. um when there's a greenhouse covering mm -hmm. i tend to understand that for example in the sun is at midday mm -hmm. and it's like december february mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. don't you experience heat stress or how do you regret these temperatures so what we do our greenhouse is not just like any other greenhouse uh, we have a lot of openings on top on the other side we've got an opening at, at, at the gable area yeah. we have a netting also on the outside and on the other corner that allows ventilation in there oh, okay. and then the netting here we do a shade net mm. on the ceiling so the shade net again reduces the the heat that's coming up so this is a shade net this is a shade this the, on this side eh? We didn't do a shade net here, just a, a normal insect net, but on the inside side of the, of the love cage, or the oh, fly room, yeah, see, see. that's a shade net. Okay. So, but what we're doing right now, we're doing a shade net in every place we're doing. Because mm -hmm. remember, our, our core business as a company uh, is consult consultancy, setup, and uh, trainings. trainings and selling of the breeding stock. Mm -hmm. So when we're doing the setups now, we're doing shade net on every greenhouse. Mm -hmm. That again reduces too much heat. Uh, coming to your question about uh, the heat, on the side, you can see ours is open. Mm -hmm. We do roll-ups. Uh -huh. So, why we're having the netting on the inside is to make sure nothing gets in mm -hmm. that's not needed, and, and then nothing leaves. But now we do roll-ups on the side. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of ventilation. Yeah, can feel Yes. It, yeah. So, but when again it's cold, we, we also have cold seasons. We roll them down, and then we, every place is closed. So at least we maintain the little heat that's in here. Okay. Yes. Guys, I think this is what we call smart farming, smart agriculture. Here, waste is converted. Mm -hmm. In a period of about 10 days. Sure. 10 days. Yeah. You've got very good organic manure mm -hmm. and you've got enough protein for mm -hmm. your animals. Very true. I really encourage you to try this. Mm -hmm. A very good trainer. You can see all questions answered mm -hmm. here. You're doing a good job. Thank you so much. Last question. Uh -huh. This feed, mm -hmm. one would introduce it, like we were just we we're just having some conversation over lunch, mm -hmm. and you mentioned that mm -hmm. it's best for chicken, mm -hmm. best for pigs, mm -hmm. is it? For fish also. For fish as well. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Now, during the training, mm -hmm. you mentioned that mm -hmm. it can be given to mud fish mm -hmm. in live for when, when they're live yes they're live yes because of their feeding habits exactly but for tilapia it needs to be dried, dried yeah so that it can float and be fed exactly from the exactly now mm -hmm. one would ask you mm -hmm. or one would wonder mm -hmm. what amounts mm -hmm. would one use mm -hmm. because excess too much of something is poisonous and mm -hmm. too little of something mm -hmm. you will not get the results exactly mm -hmm. so bsf it has a protein content between uh, 36 to 45. Mm -hmm. But that again depends on the waste you've been feeding it. Exactly. I always say this, as human beings, we are what we eat. If you eat poorly, we'll tell how you look like. Yep. If you eat a balanced diet, we'll tell how you look like. Yep. The same thing with BSF. Mm -hmm. You feed it waste that's rich in protein also, it will have lots of protein. With less protein, it will be less in protein also. So uh, that depends uh, with where you're getting your waste and all that. Coming to feeding your chicken and your fish and everything else, uh, 
it says on, 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 on the cost of production. The chicken feed uh, between 110 to 130, the free range, yeah? but the caged ones do 110. So we're coming to feed the BSF, it says between 50 to 60 percent. So you'll be feeding BSF 60 percent. So you left the conventional feed of around 50 only. So you're just introducing so some BSF? Yes. Like like six, like 50 S grams? Yeah, exactly. Like six, 50 to 60 grams. Uh -huh. And remember this, mm -hmm. BSF is not just protein. Mm -hmm. People don't just talk about protein, protein, protein. It's good it has protein. But BSF also has over 17 different amino acids. We've got theonine, we've got lysine. These amino acids boost the immune system of these poultry, of these pigs, of these all these, that we even use less antibiotics on them. So it's a big, big, big plus. So a normal farmer will just need to do uh, the 60% and then uh, do uh, the, the 50 with the maize and a bit of greens. And you're good to go. Guys, mm. you get that? It is not only rich in proteins, mm. but also rich in micro ingredients. Mm -hmm. When you are doing the poultry course, the feed formulation, I've shared with you the link here. I really mentioned about the lysine, threonine, phytokinines, mm -hmm. sorry, lysine, threonine, uh, zinc, um, try to find all that. And you really kept asking me, where will I buy these mm -hmm. micro ingredients? Mm -hmm. And they were damn expensive for those mm -hmm. who tried to buy. Mm -hmm. There, it is here. It is here. It's here. And it's organic. Very true. God has put everything in this small lavi. So if I'm spending 90 shillings mm -hmm. per kilo mm -hmm. of feed, mm -hmm. that is a um, thousand grams. Mm -hmm. A thousand grams is mm -hmm. supposed to feed, on average, 10 birds a day. Mm -hmm. If I bring my BSF, mm -hmm. it means that I will only buy half a kilo, which Very is true. 45 shillings. Very true. Oh my goodness. Very true. And you mentioned mm -hmm. that you will spend at most, how much to produce a kilo of BSF? Around 20, 25 shillings, maximum 30 on the highest. But if, you, if you're getting waste from your own farm, even 10 shillings. 10 shillings? Yeah. Yeah. You said mm. with some coins, some 20 to 30 shillings. Uh, exactly, exactly, exactly. And that's now why exactly. AIM Agriculture is here for you. Mm. Briefly, mm -hmm. just briefly, for mm -hmm. a starter, mm -hmm. what are the requirements? Uh, requirements on doing BSF? Yeah, if you want to do your own uh, small BSF, mm -hmm. what would one uh, think of? For example, you need a structure. Mm -hmm. What are the other things? Uh, BSF is easy, mm -hmm. but uh, don't, shy it, uh, don't shy away from it because it's capital intense, let me just say first. But don't be scared about, the, about it, it being capital intense because you can start in an easy way, very easy. You can just use your timber that's in the farm and just do your greenhouse and just do the polythene, the greenhouse polythene, uh, the UV treated. And uh, you don't have to use these expensive crates. You can get maybe the water jerry can, the square ones, split it into two and you've got your crates already. And then you're good to go. It's, it's, it's easy. The number one thing is passion. Apart from passion, number one, from the training, once you give the training, the number one thing is the concept. Yeah. If you get the concept right, you're good to go. Uh, it's not how tech you, you, you start, it's not how classy you start, but it's once you get the concept, it's, you're good to go. Oh, great. Yes. Oh, great. Sure. Why do you have different colors? Blue, yellow, red. Is it because of something? Um, it's for aesthetic value. I think Number one, I think they love the yellow and the red. The yellows are good. Mm -hmm. By the way, funny enough, the flies are attracted to yellow. If you, if you just look at every yellow crate, mm -hmm. the flies that came out are stuck on yellow crates. Yep. But uh, it's, it's good to have different colors. Just It looks good, you know? For aesthetic. Exactly. You know, you love it when you step in here and you look like, and they're arranged in order. Wow. You, uh, 
it makes you feel good also. Guys, you've been to a show whereby you literally have no question. <laughs> it has been well done. And uh, I'm so grateful for hosting us. Mm -hmm. And this is an opportunity for those who are asking me of where to get trained on BSF farming. Rotten Master is your guy in town. Mm -hmm. He's just within Nairobi actually. Sure. Nairobi. Sure. If you wanna use public means mm -hmm. 30 shillings, mm -hmm. you are here. Sure. If you wanna use an Uber, I don't think it's more than 300 shillings. Maximum 400 shillings. Maximum 400 shillings, mm -hmm. you're here. And he offers different training packages. Mm -hmm. You can come for training, go home. Mm -hmm. You can come for training, stay here for five days. Sure. And I'm sure mm -hmm. you will not leave the mm -hmm. way you came. Very true. Best wishes. Thank you so much. We can't wait to see you change the nation again. Wow, thank you. We'll meet in places. Thank you also for coming. Be blessed. And hosting me. Thank you so much. Thank you. God bless you. So guys, what I would say to you is be encouraged. You can be able to start this. For me, I started six years ago. Protein Master is six years old. And uh, indeed, when we started, it wasn't as easy as you think. We started with my brother. He's called Robert. And... Uh, He's in a different area, but I'm the one here. And uh, it was hard, very hard when it started, but we need to push on and be consistent. And I want to encourage you guys, it's possible, we can be able to do it. Uh, nothing comes easy, nothing comes easy. At the end of it all, it's gonna be beautiful. It's gonna be beautiful. I love the scripture in the Bible that says that in his time, he makes all things beautiful. That's what God does that start start small start anyway Rome wasn't built in a day but there's a step you take that when you start it's going to be well for the youth outside there there's a lot of money uh, out here these waste we are seeing all over our estates our cities we can be able to change these we can be able to convert these uh, there's talk about climate change and everything. BSF, in its simplicity, is answering all these questions. The amount of waste that we are getting from the dump sites and all these that we are, we are having, there's a lot of carbon emission in that. There is a lot of methane, which is a silent killer. But when you start working with BSF, you tackle all those issues. You tackle the issue uh, of our blue economy. Because remember again, we are coming to help the big fish because they feed on these small fish. We overfish all these, we are done. So we leave that for the fish and then we create another protein source for our animals. Again, we are coming again to solve a solution. Remember one thing, it is said as long as you're in business uh, and you're selling solutions, then you're making money. This is a solution to the women, to the youth. Let us get into it. Let's get our hands dirty. And we're going to smile all the way to the bank. And let's make the world a better place for all of us. Thank you.